so it seems that Games Workshop is expanding their paint range with 25 new contrast paints, a whole bunch more shades, and reformulating some core options. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking briefly about Games Workshop's recent paint update, basically the news that their contrast paints range is going to be massively expanded, and also a few important things in their current lineup are being shaken up a bit as well. I must admit I was quite impressed when contrast paints initially dropped a few years back. Often Games Workshop's range doesn't tend to be massively different to a lot of their other competitors, but that one seemed like it was a genuine technical innovation. Nice Ronnie paint that's halfway between a wash and a regular paint, where darker pigment pulls at the recesses of the miniature, most of the rest of it just tints the pigment that's underneath it, and overall you have instant detail applied to a model, although it does work better on some things than others. Since then, another couple of painting studios have created their own similar products, as these have been really popular, particularly with newer hobbyists, or the armies that get on best with them. Often things that are a bit more organic in nature, fleshy effects, cloth work, or anything that broadly needs to be painted the same colour, but has a lot of detail that would be kind of tiresome to shade. I personally do quite enjoy using them, them myself for certain purposes. It seems like quite a nice way that you can get some basic detail on, and then you can always go in and add further highlights if you want. In any case, it sounds like there's going to be a lot more of them to choose from. They basically announced this in an animated paint trailer yesterday, saying that something exciting was coming from their Citadel labs in July, and they seem to be making good use of their animation department, having a whole load of space marines and stormcast eternals wandering around before getting splattered all over with paint. The article said that their labs have made a breakthrough apparently, though from what it sounds from this article, it sounds like it's basically an expansion of the contrast paint range rather than anything truly new. Though I must admit that phrase does kind of imply some sort of technical development. Don't get me wrong though, I'm sure a lot of R&D went into all these new paints, and it took an enormous amount of time and effort to bring this whole new product line to fruition. The things that were announced today were 25 new contrast paints, which do appear to be added to the range as opposed to replacing them as best I can tell. Also 7 new shades added in slightly different colours to the more standard ones. The spray paint of White Scar has been reimagined, and is now going to function as quite a different type of spray paint, a lot more brilliant white than off-white, though apparently a few things have been dropped along the way. The gloss versions of several paints are gone, including Known Oil and Agrax Earthshade, though their matte versions will still remain in the range. I guess kind of annoying if you were building your army around the gloss versions of those paint pots. Might be worth stocking up if they are going to go out of production, and you want something that's exactly the same as previous. Here are the 25 new contrast paints all laid out. As per normal, they've got Games Workshop's quirky world-themed names, things like Bar Red for the Blood Angels, Bad Moon Yellow for the Orcs, things that they have used for previous incarnations of their paints a few times. It sounds like they are expanding the range rather than replacing other things, which would be kind of problematic if people had started an army in one contrast paint, and I think it is quite handy to fill in the gaps and give different tone options for each one of their different colours, as a lot of them might just feel a little bit off for certain armies. Now, for example, we've got multiple different options for different shades of green rather than just one or two, so I think it would genuinely add some better options if you did want an army in any given scheme, as there were some colours or tones of colours that just didn't really exist within the range previously. To better help demonstrate what they've come up with, I've got a few different example pages of models that are actually painted in the contrast paint scheme, and then have a big one alongside all of them ranked up. I think it's always going to be a little bit hard to judge a paint by exactly what it is, just from photos of what it comes out with. I think in reality you'd probably have to pick up a pot and see how it works with your own models and different undercoats if you're trying to look to get the effects that you want to. I think the collections are a little bit arbitrary rather than actually trying to represent different ways that the paints work. They've grouped a few chunks of colours together, maybe by roughly how strong the pigment is in them and whether they create a bit more of a bright or somber or subtle effect in terms of the contrast are being applied. It looks like the deep purple one looks quite nice in my opinion. That new one's called Luxion Purple apparently. The regal ones give off a bit of a primary colour vibe. Then there's an ethereal and eerie set. All of these ones appear to be quite light and maybe have a bit more contrast between the effects that are pulled and leaving the panels a little bit more washed out perhaps. They've chosen to go with a bunch of ghostly types with this, and I think that Pilar Glacier one looks particularly interesting. It seems to give you a largely white model, but with bluish tints. 
I wonder if that could be an interesting effect for something like snow bases. Then lastly, they've got a section called Dark and Grounded. This one includes one called Black Legion, which I'd sort of be interested to see how that differs from Black Templar. I wonder if this one might be even darker. I feel like some of the darkest contrast paints might be some of the more useful ones, particularly if you've just got a certain section of the model that needs shading and a bit of quick detail added, and maybe isn't going to be the sole focus of attention. In any case, filling in the gaps of colours seems like a sensible idea. Let me know that if any of these new tones particularly stand out to you. Then we've got a section of seven new shades. These ones would be to go alongside things like Known Oil, Agrax Earthshade, and I've already got quite a decent palette of different shading options available. I don't think they had a blue shade available before this. And they've also got a fairly subtle one on the bottom right hand corner called Soul Black Grey. That one could be a reasonable shade for doing things like white armour or very light grey armour, as it's a bit less harsh than some of the others. Finally, and one of the more interesting things for me, is their redone white scar, their spray paint. This one is one I've used a fair bit to be honest, and it generally produces an off-white, one that I've found that contrast paint already seems to go over fairly well in my opinion, or can just be a good base coat for lighter paint schemes. It seems that they're making a shift of this from their off-white colour to a more brilliant white one. I've got pictures of the previous one and the current one in the image here. The older one is quite a lot darker than the current one is. I feel for most people, having a brilliant white option in the spray paint range is kind of handy. I was using an alternate provider for the majority of my guard army. As I feel, unless you highlight quite harshly, white scar does give the model more of an appearance of being light grey as opposed to actually white. I feel on balance this will probably be more useful to more people, though if you did have an army that depended on the off-white spray, then it could be irritating if you don't have any more supply of that as well as that supposedly it's formulated to be a bit smoother than it was previously, which is supposed to take contrast paints a little bit better, at least according to them. In any case, let me know what you think about these new reformulated paints. How much of a difference would this make to your painting, if any? I look forward to hearing your feedback down in the comments, and any other details out of this new paint range that I might have missed. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, well, I'll certainly keep up with Games Workshop's news and releases, particularly anything around Warhammer 40k. I do tend to post videos most days. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel, I would just like to mention one way in which you can do so, and that's my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. If you were thinking about picking up some Warhammer of any sort, Element Games is a discount retailer. They're based in the UK, and they offer usually 10-20% off Games Workshop's miniatures. If you click the link and buy anything from them, a small amount goes to help support all specs tactics while not costing you any more whatsoever. It can just be a way to save some money and help the channel out on things that you were going to buy anyway. The link's down in the video description, and there's also one for Amazon if you happen to live in the USA. That one works much the same. Click the link, buy anything off Amazon, and a small amount goes to help support the channel without costing you anything else. A big thank you to you guys who have been using that, it really does help out. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.